It's another video from Aussie's Robot. But you got the banana collection. All right, everyone. Welcome back. Thank you for joining me. I decided to do the gift shop. <laughs> The gift shop video, and by that I mean, you know, I have all these 90s robots, kind of 90s, I guess uh, some could be in the early 2000s, and uh, I said, let me, let me pick one out. It'd be funny to do this Trump bot, but he doesn't really do anything. He's static. I got to show him at some point. But uh, a lot of these I had bought for uh, parts. I think I mentioned that previously. And uh, by the way, where are all you t-shirt buyers? Look at this. We have some more stack back there. So get on it. Um, let's see. What would be what would be interesting to you know what? Have they shown the piston robots? You know, let me let's do a piston robot. Let's check out this thing. Is it the same one back there? Uh, before. And by the way, <clears throat> I haven't seen this Vander uh, toy cookie jar anywhere. So if you, anyone else has one of these or you've seen it, let me know. Um, and I was able to get rid of three huge moving boxes out of my crawl space to put this stuff up here. So, am I going to stick with this piston? Since I did that uh, Robin Blue uh, piston, man, this box is so much bigger than the original. Yeah, the Futurama Bender. So this is all stuff you can buy. At some point, maybe I try to figure out how to do it online. Of course, there's your pens, your LED lights. There's some original art by Robert Whitmire that I used for the cover of that Changing Prince. I'm just too lazy to get a ladder to reach back there to do the thunder. And there's the bright and shiny bender. And, uh, of course, the beautiful Eric Joyner painting. Huge. So let's uh, let's bring this into the, the abyss. Well, Got to always say hi to the mystery robot there. Hello there, Robo. Let's see if we can get him to hold this. There you go. A robot holding a robot. Perfect. You like that? Yes, I do. <laughs> Perfect. All right. So, yeah, like a lot of toys. Some of those go back to the 90s from Metal Mania out in California. And uh, let's see here. Anyway, you guys comfortable? You got your snack in hand, your drink, your coffee, your clanking, your stirring, your sweeten, sweetening it. You have your whiskey, your rum, your rye if it's night. So what do we have here? This is the haha, -ha, right? It has to be the haha -ha toy made in China. Is it a special version? I thought I had a special version. Well, this is the plain Janer. Whoopsie daisy. Why is it something melted in there? This is kind of an unboxing too. So this is this is a C cell, right? Uh, let me get some batteries here. Pan back a little bit. You could see some schmutz from the oil, the grease. I have no idea if this thing's gonna work because it's been sitting in there for God knows how long. I don't know when these were made. I mean, I guess you could say they were packaged better than the, packaged better than the originals with the styrofoam. All right, let me get two C batteries. Like I said, hopefully you're comfortable and you're ensconced in your chair. You've subscribed because why not? And we're gonna load up a couple of Duracells in here now. Well, this way, if somebody wants to buy it, I'll know it works too. All right. Lift this camera up a little bit. Okay. 
Are you ready for the moment of truth? Let's see if Made in China is going to let us down or if it's actually going to work. Oh, look at that. First time ever. Aha, uh -huh, fooled you. You know, I turned off the camera again by mistake, so I had to stitch together. But that's all right, because I have my horrible opening. Look at that click. I'm not used to this thing, click uh, buttons clicking like that. It's a clicker. Let's see if I could turn this light off. So, you know, like I said, he, this is a motion sensor there. So if I kind of do this at some point, just picking up motion anywhere in the room turns this on automatically. I'm going to turn it on now and turn it off because maybe it gives me a window. Not bad. Look, I, I got to say, I'm pleasantly surprised that this thing is working. And really, in all honesty, it's working better than my... Um, Robin Blue, that costs a hell of a lot more money than this thing. Eh, you know what? Not bad at all. So, that's your HaHa uh, -ha remote control piston action robot. So now it's tested. I gotta tell you, there's a lot of little cool robots sitting back there. You know, at one point, I thought maybe I would you know, kind of collect these things, but I just don't think it's feasible. I don't have the storage for all of them, you know? I mean, so it is what it is. I, I like the way they kind of mold that styrofoam, right? So now if I can get this, look at that, it fits like a glove, like a glove. And you know, another thing I did is I bought a, uh, a cool rubber stamp and so now i just stamp everything and now you know you got if you ever buy this <laughs> you got it from from the collection the one and only so that's it for you know let me put these batteries back oh i'm on that stupid button that turns the camera off let me hold it from the base of this Oh, by the way, like, a, uh, I don't know if I showed you guys this. Mike Kazanoff, did, did, I don't know if I showed you this or not, but he came by uh, when when he delivered all the machines. He actually had uh, found this at a record store. And uh, I'm waiting. I, I guess I'm going to frame this. I'm going to put it by Gort, you know, because it's Ringo. And the funny thing is we had just seen Ringo like a few weeks before. And he's like, yeah, I thought of you with the Gorts. <laughs> he bought me Ringo's album with Gort. It's kind of weird that Ringo decided to do uh, do an album with with Gord on the cover. I mean, I guess it's not weird because uh, you know that, that other artists have had robots. Queen after Ringo though was Ringo the first? That's a trivia question. Was Ringo the first rock star to make an album with a robot on the cover? I think that Good Night Vienna was 1973, maybe? Um, hmm. I don't know. Good question, right? So, anything else that's interesting here? Let me know if you guys remember any of this, uh, these robots. The little mini, uh, I showed that on the giveaway, the little drummer, and then you got these drummers. Remember this thing? So, Metal Mania... When they were around, Metal Mania would use these plain white boxes. So let's see. This is kind of a um, R35. This is why I like the stamp. And I got the stamps on a whim. I'm like, oh, I wonder if I would ever use a stamp. And I sure as heck did. So here's one of the Metal Manias. And I guess this is, uh, you know, if you want to say early, because, again, these are from the 90s. Let me put this down. Is there a key with this guy? Is there a key built in? It's paper. 
No key in there. You know what? There's no key for this guy. So that's good to know. Not only is it missing a key. Now look at this. This is the first time I've ever opened this thing. It's not only missing the key, but it's missing a claw. And I've never opened this. I've probably had this close to, what, 25, 30 years. And they shipped it to me. So now I wonder if Metal Mania is still around. The, the keys are normally in these things. So I got gypped. Not only that, but look at the wonky eye on this thing. They didn't even color in the eye all the way. <laughs> Damn you, Metal Mania. Could you imagine? Uh, yeah, I bought this, like, you know, $5 robot from you in uh, 1998, and uh, it's missing a claw. Well, why didn't you tell us back then? Well, I just opened it now. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Now I'd have to find uh, a donor <laughs> to restore it. Let's see. The, uh, but something about these white boxes, I used to hate them, but now I think they're kind of cool. This is the... Uh, Spaceman. This will be the last one I show you guys. This one had got like some kind of wavy. I don't know, like it got damp on the top, but the toy is pristine. Never used. I hope it's got its key. There, there you go. It's got a key there. I mean, not a bad looking toy. You know, when I bought these, I thought, well, maybe you never know. You need a spring. You need a part. But then again, I'm like, I don't know how to do any of that crap. <laughs> so, I guess I'd probably send it to John. Hey, John, uh, I got a part. I got a, I need a, I need a toy, but I don't know what the hell I'm doing. Could you use any of this? The gun, actually, you know, all those, like, deep-sea dive robots and, uh, and that, that whole category, they're always missing the gun. I'm kind of cobbled something out of that. Let's see if this guy does anything. Ooh, kind of spazzy, but let me wind them again. It's never this is the first time it's ever been used. I mean, look, it is what it is for a cheap toy. I don't know, what do these go for now on eBay? Like 20 bucks or something? So my wife was asking me, how the hell do I price these things in? I said, I don't know, go on eBay and see what they're selling. I have no idea. I never really bought these with the intentions of selling them back then, but that's about all this stuff. Now, here, here's the disappointing thing, right? You bother to make this toy, but look at the lithography. How just absolutely plain on the face, you know what I mean? They could have added a lot more character, a lot more detail. And this is just when they, you know, they cheap out. And they cheap out on the details. The devil is in the details on these toys. Even this stuff, you know, those bright blue primary colors, the dials, you know, no, no hash marks on the dials, no numbers. It's, you know, simple. And I don't know, would it have cost more to, you know, just have an artist make it a little bit, a little bit more embellished, uh, a little bit more detailed? You know, but it, it's it's cool and all. The other thing I'll say this as I sign this video off. Um, and if you like this, by the way, let me know because uh, I'll go through some of the, you know, I got so many different things here in this gift shop that, uh, you know, sometimes it's cool. You don't always have to look at the like super duper rare, you know, expensive, valuable, whatever. It's like, like toys are toys, right? Um, but unfortunately, for whatever reason, I mean, I, I have my suspicions and I wish I'd cataloged this information. I don't. Um, what show were we watching, my wife and I? Uh, I think it was... Um, I think it was The Last of Us, okay? I'm pretty sure The Last of Us show. On, uh, and you know what? I better put this and go speak somewhere else because, you know, people might walk by and say, why is that guy on his knees talking? Kind of strange. Um, I'll just go to my... Well, no, I'll just stay here. <clears throat> so in The Last of Us, right? I'll point the camera towards the uh, Mr. Atomic here. They had a scene where the kid, the first kid, there was a Joel. Joel's with the, the kid and um, she had robots. One of the robots was the Lilliput. 
I've seen robots on Doom Patrol. I've seen just robots on a bunch of TV shows, a bunch. But it's always these cheaper Chinese robots. I don't, I, I can't imagine, like, if you know those toys, why can't you use the, um, or find a collector to, to provide you some vintage tin? Now, before you say, like, well, it's a kid's toy, right? But this is the thing. I don't know any kids, to be quite honest with you. If we're being honest with ourselves, with the exception of somebody that was in here, that went through the collection here, and they bought um, they bought a Neutron Man, I believe, or an Atomic Robot Man for one, their nephew. But by and large, kids don't have like 10 toys like that to play with. So my thing is this, my contention is this. If you're going to show a robot, right, you don't have to make it a kid's toy all the time because that's what they do. They put these always as like accoutrements. You know, in other words, it's like an older set designer. They're designing the set, the kid's room, and they... You know, they like these tin toys, but I'm like, you know what? Why don't you do something different? Get a vintage, a cool vintage toy and use that to stage your set. Like put it in a freaking, you know, like at the guy's office, you know, his home office on his shelf. He has a vintage, cool, valuable robot. That would be so much more epic than always having the cheap kid stuff. So that's my sign off to you. Anyway, thank you for joining me. Let me know what you think. If you want to see more of these um inexpensive robots or toys. I'll film some more. So appreciate your time. And with that, my friends, I will talk to you later.